it's there, but mm -hmm. you can no longer blame mm -hmm. racism for your progress. Mm -hmm. You know what it is, recognize it, build with your people, mm -hmm. you know, be conscious of how you spend your money, where mm -hmm. you spend your dollar. Mm -hmm. Don't hate on your fellow brother because they doing something. Mm -hmm. And we're live, Cuzzo. We Hit him with back. that intro. Welcome back to the Electives Podcast. Uh, today we are in downtown Aurora at the Cottonseed Collective. We have Yvonne here. We want to say thank you to her for having us, first and foremost. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's on. You can, yeah, you can hold it. You can, I'd say yeah. about like in this vicinity okay. is good. Yeah. yeah. It feels a little weird in the beginning, you know, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I have to sometimes catch myself because in the previous episodes, yeah. my audio doesn't get picked up, <laughs> oh. but I'm hope, I'm hoping in here, you know, with the echo, I'm sure yeah. it'll, it'll pick it up. Okay. Yeah. yeah it'll get picked up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Up. yeah. So you're but gonna... first and foremost, we want to start off with saying that we'd love to hear the story behind what inspired this particular business and where the, the name Cottonseed Collective came from. Okay, so the story is extremely long, but I'll summarize it for okay. the most part. Cool. Um, so I started off, well, my journey as far as entrepreneurism mm -hmm. starts probably when I was about 12. Okay. So my mother was... My mother was Panamanian. Okay. She's English was her second language. Okay. Um, when she came to the U.S., she learned English by watching Good Times. So she really? was she was always kind of ambitious and trying to you know figure things out on her own. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have a college education. She really didn't have too many skills. So she took it upon herself to say, you know what? I think I'm gonna start going downtown Chicago. She would take this piece of paper and in her broken English, she would write housekeeper looking for work. And she would write her number across the side and she would like cut these little tear offs. Mm -hmm. Business so, cards. Yeah, pretty much old <laughs> yeah. school business cards. Old yeah. school. So she would take me along with her. We'd take the bus downtown and she was an extrovert. So she would build relationships with the doorman at the high rises downtown. Uh -huh. And she would, you know, come to them and say, hey, can I put this, you know, paper about me doing housekeeping mm -hmm. in your laundry room, mm -hmm. in your grocery store? Because mm -hmm. a lot of these rich high rises have grocery stores, laundry rooms, they got all kind of things inside. Mm -hmm. So she developed these relationships with these doormen and they would either hang them up for her or they would allow her to go in and do it herself. Right. So out of all of this, my mother worked for like the vice president of McDonald's. She worked for NBA players. She works for a lot of people. So at one point, one day I was getting ready to go to school and she says, you know what? No, you're not going to go today. You're going to come with me to work. I had no idea. You know, I was like 12. I didn't know anything about what she was doing. I just knew she was a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. So we took the bus downtown. And she, we were, I, I don't remember a lot of things, but this particular incident day, or yeah. day is really very clear. Out. So we walk in, she's, you know, greeting everyone, you know, the doorman, the people there. So she, we get in this elevator, she has a special key. And this key goes all the way up to the penthouse. So I've never seen a penthouse. It's my first time at 12 years old. So we get there, she has the key to open it up and she opens it up and I'm like, God. You know, we live in a one bedroom in yeah. Chicago. And, you know, she used to tell me about this guy named Sam Zell, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, who is this guy? And then later I learned, like, you know, Sam Zell is a billionaire now. He's mm -hmm. a real estate guru. Mm -hmm. So she worked closely with his chef. His name was Art. And mm -hmm. he ended up being Oprah chef. Mm -hmm. So my mom exposed me to a lot of wealth. Yeah. Very young. Yeah. And just... It, it touches on the topic of exposure, you know, being exposed to things young. It plants that seed and you don't really know. You don't know later, you, you know, you don't know when it's going to sprout, when it's yep. going to kind of spark that in you. But um, that's kind of where it started mm -hmm. and it, you know, kind of went from there, just kind of going around with her to different, you know, her different clients, places and things. 
But um, in 2016, I was working for Hyundai Motor America. Okay. Um, I worked at the corporate office. Uh, I did consumer affairs there. So I did a lot of stuff with, with them, and um, they had partnerships with, like, the NFL and stuff like that. So we would um, partake in a lot of the things like that with the company. But um, I kind of had an incident happen that required me to pivot. Okay. And, um, you know, it, it, I... By, I, I'm not going to say it's a by chance meeting, but I met someone that owned a lot of property down here. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was talking to him. I was like, you know, it'd be cool if I had a spot. You know, I'm just kind of trying to further my creative mm -hmm. uh, passions. Mm -hmm. So the way this unfolded <laughs> was not like a traditional business person that would right. like plan it, you right. know, have this massive business plan. Nah, that didn't happen. It didn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. So he presented me with an opportunity. He's like, well, I got this building, you know, if you want to come take a look at it, it was the one I ate North Broadway. Mm -hmm. When I first got there, when we first got there, we're like, oh my God, what, what is this? Is mm -hmm. this like a haunted space? <laughs> like it was dark. It was spiders everywhere. Right, right, right. It was crazy. So I'm like, you know, and then I just kept thinking, well, you got to start somewhere. You True. Know? So me and my husband, we just, he put in the work. I was like in California, he was putting in work, you know, fixing mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where the journey started. I mean, it's, it's, it started really young as far as the seed being planted. And right. then I did a lot. I'm also a Navy veteran. I'm a combat veteran. So, you know, I've thank kind you of, for your service. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I've mm -hmm. been involved in a lot of different things that I feel kind of molded and shaped me to this point. And yeah. I'm still growing and still yeah. exploring and still trying new things. But um, essentially, that's kind of how it started. And it was, uh, what was that? 2019 was when we opened. And I'd say it was five months later and COVID hit. So wow. we hadn't really established ourselves. Right. We haven't. Re we hadn't really found our groove, and right. you know, we were starting. To. Right. So we just kind of. It was. It was two choices. You're gonna quit. You're gonna keep going. You're gonna try to figure this out. Yeah. So we decided to just ride the wave. You yeah. Know, just to oh, yeah. keep going with it. And there's nothing so, wrong with that too, because like when, sometimes you gotta just jump off a cliff and learn how to fly on the way down. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what we did with the podcast. Yeah, you know, we're we're learning and growing just like you know, just like you guys are in that yeah. sense. You know, yeah. But the na the name Cotton Seed, what where did that come from? Okay, so the Cotton Seed, the Cotton Seed Creative. So the Cotton Seed stems from family history. Okay, that's what. Yeah. So my father was African American. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother has. This, may she rest in peace. My father's side of the family is from Mississippi. What part? We, we're from all over. Okay, okay. Carrollton, Mississippi. Okay. We have family in Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. We, we got because I got family in New Albany. That's why. I okay. Asked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so my father's side of the family, they're from Mississippi, and as a child, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. So I kind of toggled between the north side of Chicago to the south side of Chicago. Spent a lot of time with her. So growing up, my grandmother always had this picture that I used to stare at. It was a picture of a woman, a black woman, in a cotton field. And it was very grainy. It was very, you know, um, it was a very old picture. But it always stood out to me. My grandma talked about cotton picking and also about um you know my grandmother was from the civil rights era so mm -hmm. she kind of you know she she went through the struggle had to drink out the black fountain had you know the type of work she did she had to iron white people's clothes for like a dollar a day and stuff like that so it, right. it all the name itself has a family meaning um it's kind of dedicated to ancestors that have been through slavery that have had the sharecropping background so that's that's where it stems from that was that was my guess but i i didn't know you know so yeah so hearing it now is it kind of pulls it and brings it full circle yeah you know? and i think that that's wonderful that that's also a way that you're honoring <clears throat> excuse me not only your grandmother but you know the rest of your ancestors and all those who came before us really kind of paved the way you know so it's powerful it's powerful yeah, definitely what well, during when you guys first opened and you said during covid what kind of challenges did you face i mean because we know from the outside because we all live through it but you as a business owner can't have anybody in here 
what were kind of the biggest challenges you faced? Yeah, yeah. You're inducted into the school of the hard knock life really quickly mm-hmm. in those moments. Um, I would say that in those moments, you, you do have to pull a little bit of your ancestors out of you. You got to pull that, you know. <laughs> you got to dig deep. You got to dig deep yeah. and you got to say, hey, look, you know, there's been worse situations that we've had to live through and humanity is still here. You know, we're still evolving. We're still getting through it. Um, the challenges were definitely not being able to service customers in the manner that we initially planned on. Mm-hmm. Um which was, you know, in-store retail. So we had those challenges. We had challenges of people just not going out anymore. And there was a shift beginning at that point. And the shift, we had an online shift a long time ago, but it really picked up during COVID. People deciding they wanted to just do all their shopping online. So you had to become really strategic. You had to really refine your strategy as to how are you going to Mm -hmm. still keep these customers engaged. Um, so those were a lot of the challenges that we faced, just not being able to do business as normal. And then now do you have like an online store presence more than you do in store or did it kind we of go do, back? They both, um, I think they work very well together as mm-hmm. far as our online store. We're always tweaking it because we want to also give a similar experience in both places. So if mm-hmm. we have a customer in California, we want them to really understand kind of what we're doing, what mm-hmm. you know, what our feel is, mm-hmm. um, what our passion is for kind of urban vibe, colorful, mm-hmm. you know, feel. Mm-hmm. So um, we did start the online store during COVID, and um, actually, it's been working well alongside. Oh, that's good. The in-store retail. That's good. Mm-hmm. And then what? What? Because you, it seems like you've been kind of like in that hustler mindset since you were twelve. So when you ran into these obstacles, like what, how did you overcome them? And then what was your mindset during that period of time to get through it? Um, hmm. How we overcame those obstacles was really being innovative, which is important. Change is always inevitable. It's going to happen. It may happen. You may see it coming. You may not see it coming. But both times you have to react to Mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. So during those times, we, you know, we had like curbside pickup. We had um, online um, delivery. You know, we had all type of things to try to keep the customers engaged and also kind of following what, what the CDC was recommending as far as safety protocols and making sure that the customers felt safe. So overall, it was a lot of innovative things that we had to do Mm -hmm. to keep customers engaged Um, and I think we did a pretty good job with that Um, we definitely were able to still keep a lot of the same customers that we had when we first started and uh, during that time period a lot of people were still wanting to support small business they Mm -hmm. were still wanting to not see a lot of small business go under because of that Mm -hmm. and i'll be honest i have been really grateful or not grateful i have been really thankful and grateful that i was able to you know ride that wave and get through that storm because a lot of people were not able to it just it takes it takes it takes a team you know true and and my husband is is a project manager so he works in that kind of field of you know Mm -hmm. needing to go left go right or you know bring things forward that'll help you know keep things going in the direction that you're trying to so nice nice and you know you bring up your husband his name is Steve right so with Father's Day coming up you know being next week um, what and this is I know this one's this one's off the rip but I mean the Father's Day you know we got that coming up yeah we got it coming up um what and how, how long have you guys been married? Ooh, I'm trying to count. So my niece is 15. Mm-hmm. When we met, she was like two days old. So, okay. um, and my son is 11. So we've been together 15, going on 16 years. Mm-hmm. And then um, we've been married for going on 12. Wow. Yeah, so it's wow. been a, it's been a minute. It's been yeah. a minute. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's a beautiful thing, you know. Marriage doesn't get, um, you know, it's unfortunate, but we we see a lot of negativity on social media when it comes to relationships and marriages. 
but uh i would love you know for especially people of color to put more of a positive spin on marriage it ain't easy mm -hmm. you know no one's saying that it's going to be easy but to, but to shine a uh, positive light on healthy relationships and um you know what would you what would you say is something that you really appreciate about your husband uh i'm gonna say i appreciate his energy mm. because he's he's not tougher than i am i mm. could say mm. um i don't know i appreciate his ability to kind of deal with anything mm -hmm. that's that's thrown our mm -hmm. way so mm -hmm. he's, yeah. he sounds like a very grounded extremely individual. grounded person mm -hmm. extremely grounded um yeah i would say that his energy balances mine mm -hmm. so i'm the one that's like if something goes wrong it's like oh my god the world is ending everything <laughs> we're about yeah. to die yeah. he's like no everything's like, okay yeah, take it easy he keeps me and my anxiety calm yeah. so yeah. that's what i appreciate about him is his energy he's an anchor he's an anchor yeah for sure no, shout out to him yeah. shout out to you sir and that's that's huge in business too because you go probably through ups and downs every week so to have because we talk about building a team yep you know like whenever you're going to start a business or whatever the case may be and it sounds like well you got him because he's like a whole team in itself because that's pretty yeah. much what you need like something goes wrong somebody to be like hey man no you do good. you do it's all good you do no, you, you definitely do. need that because a lot of the times some of the things you go through as a business person you can't tell everyone you just got to have that one person that you can really true really talk about right. true. the whole scope of things so yeah. And then how, how do you deal with, um, for those mom entrepreneurs, Yeah. how do you deal with having an 11-year-old and being a mom, being a wife, being here? How, is that, how do you balance um, all that? I would say it's, it, there's times where it can be challenging, but that's where we work as a team to make sure that we're, you know, um, Balancing the scales correctly and you know, everything is not a priority and prioritizing family, of course um, pri Prioritizing family to me is the most important thing. So I make sure that I keep that at the forefront no, yeah, That's awesome. That, yeah, that's how you gotta do it. Yeah, cuz <clears throat> I don't have a I don't have kids yet um, He does and we're always talking about, you know I have these ideas of how I think I'm gonna be able to do this and do that but yeah. ultimately I know that once it comes I'm just going to kind of like what you said earlier, I'm going to have to just, I mean, figure it all out as I go, you know, and a lot of the things that I think may happen may not even happen, right. you know, um, so yeah, I'm, I tell him all the time when I have a family, I'm going to be calling him and some <laughs> of my other customers and my mentors yeah. and just like, hey man, what do I do? <laughs> Right. I'm throwing my hands up in the air right now. Like, what do I do? How right. do I balance this? I'm about but, to drop uh, this kid off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, and then yeah. with uh, with your daughter, or do you have a son or, or your son, right? You said son. I have two sons and I have a daughter. Okay. Oh, you got two. Yeah. All right. My oldest son will be 20 next month. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Young yeah. man stepping into the yeah. real world here. Yeah. I had him yeah. young when I was in the military. So, oh, okay. yeah, he's 20. And then I have a six-year-old daughter. My six-year-old daughter has disabilities. So okay. Okay. She's, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a different challenge too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So with your, with your children, we talk about uh, the traditional and, um, non-traditional route mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. he went he went to be a barber i went to school mm -hmm. so we would talk about the two routes and then like now that i have my daughter um i do tell her to think about college yeah you know where do you want to go you know whatever start picking university stuff like that but i also teach her the other side of um because i do real estate okay. and invest so then i teach her that side now with your kids are you teaching them both or are you kind of like guiding them to you know, either the traditional or non-traditional route? Well, I definitely teach them both. One, because you always need to have something to fall back on. Your education will always be something to fall back on. Now, what you do after you obtain your education, plus education teaches you structure. If you can get a degree, that means that you didn't give up because it gets hard. True. You have to turn in papers. You have to take tests. I think if anything, it's... It, helps to create a solid foundation for the youth and if afterwards you decide well hey you know i want to own a car wash that's fine you have your education you have you know a solid foundation to start from yeah. so yeah i agree with that 
Okay. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. no, it's it's um it's it's always interesting, you know, cuz we we the, the guests that we have on and that we bring on hearing everybody's different views and opinions about these things, you know. Yeah. But um uh, next question for you would be can you speak on the importance of representation and diversity in the business world from not only being uh, you know, you're Latino and black, but being a businesswoman in today's society? What was the question again? I'm sorry. If you could speak <laughs> on the importance of the representation of diversity, um, uh, or the importance of representation, I should say, with being Latino and being black and also being a woman in today's business world. Hmm. I would say that it is extremely important. Mm. I would say that it's important for blacks and Latinos to represent in many areas. Mm -hmm. um, in the business world, it's important because you have other people that look like you that may have an idea that mm. may not have the courage to do it because they see only see one side. Mm. They only see certain races mm. achieving wealth. But I think in this day and age, what we're seeing is a lot more blacks and Latinos achieving mm -hmm. really big heights with what they're yeah. doing. And taking risks too. Taking you know? big risks yeah. and succeeding and you know also showing, I mean, like we can look at Jay-Z, for example, like he's an example of, mm. he's not an overnight success. He's been doing this for a while. Yeah, true. But I mean, he's able to step into arenas mm. that we have never seen black right. people step into. True. Not only him, uh, but how many black owned liquor brands Companies, do we yeah, have true. at this point and growing true. True. i mean kevin hart has one now so yeah. kevin I mean, hart p diddy uh the rock jay-z the rock lebron yeah, the rock james has one. yeah lebron yeah oh i didn't know he came out with one yeah yeah lebron has nice. got one yeah so i think it's very important because just looking at them we're like well hey maybe i could have a liquor brand one day too if that's what i want right so it's very important for us to be able to control the narrative mm. for our own races true because for so long even now the narrative is still controlled to some degree through media mm -hmm. through misrepresentation of what black people really are really have been mm -hmm. um you know past and present mm -hmm. so it is very important for all people black and hispanic to make sure that they're you know out there they're really you know showing the youth that look like them that yeah you can do this too because mm -hmm. it's very important to me because if we talk about from back in the day we weren't really giving any visuals to really see that hey we can accomplish things you know from the time a child is an infant a gerber bottle shows mm -hmm. a caucasian baby mm -hmm. right. you know it's just the images that mm -hmm. kids see very early mm -hmm. that stick mm -hmm. maybe yeah. i can't do that mm -hmm. I, I can't be on a you mm -hmm. know, I can't be a model. I can't be on TV. I can't do these things. Mm -hmm. It's only for, I mean, of course, that's changing right. big time. Now. Right, right, right. But it hasn't been easy. It's a long road and we still got a long way to go. I agree. I agree. Now, yeah. with your with your children, do you yeah. guys have like a, 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 do you guys allow them to say I can't in the household? Or do you guys say like, hey, don't ever say I can't, you know? Definitely, I try to gear my kids more towards rephrasing, I can't. You can. You may be experiencing some obstacles right. trying to. Right. But to me, I can't tells my brain to stop. Mm -hmm. right. I have to stop because it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So in, in that self-talk, I'm a huge believer in manifestation mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I watch Mindset, what I say. Purpose, I watch yeah, what yeah. I say. Yeah. I didn't used to. And it was like, well, you know, I said I'm having a bad day and I'm for real having, having a, bad a bad day. day. Yeah. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. My cat oh, got ran man. over. You know, it's right. just, it's just, it's teaching your children how to speak to themselves. Yep. Now you bring, you bring that up and my assumption would be, and I don't know this, but my assumption would be that you have a little bit of understanding of metaphysics and how you know how that all ties in i'm not i'm not gonna say i'm a witch or i'm an expert or anything yeah. like that but, <laughs> but you know a little something something but, but i know a little, you know something, a little something, something something i know that both in the bible and just scientifically yeah um it's always talked about the power of the tongue yep. the words that you say mm -hmm. uh your thoughts mm -hmm. it's really understanding and what i think is something that maybe has been purposefully done is to remove that from humanity, from mm -hmm. us not really knowing that we do have like this 
magnificent power. Yeah, godlike complex. To really manifest, yeah. to really make things happen if mm -hmm. we simply just think correctly. Mm -hmm. Basic principles. Yep. Think correctly, speak correctly about yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and be nice to people. You yeah. know, be kind to people because that's a, and a lot of that is missing. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is missing for a lot of people. And some people just can't see. It's it's not these big things that you have to do to see change. It's right. really small. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be hard because it's easier to think negatively than it is to think positively. So And it takes longer to get results. I know that was my biggest challenge when I was younger was it took longer. Delayed gratification. Yeah, so I was like, man, yeah. this it's taking way too long, but then the second you just, all right, let's see what next year brings. Let's see what the next year brings. And then finally you're like, oh dang, it's been five years and I made it here. Yeah. So I yeah, know yeah. I know that's been an issue for people too. To yeah, wait. Should, yeah, just wait. To wait. It's a waiting game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now how has the impact of your business been on the local community? Um, hmm. Do I know for sure? How they feel about <laughs> right, the right, seat. right? Check the I, reviews. I yeah, don't know, yeah, yeah. but I do know that the point of what I'm doing and what I'm continuing to do is to stand in my light. Yeah. To also stand into my blackness, my mm -hmm. Hispanic side. Mm -hmm. I, I want people to walk in and know that I'm not ashamed to right. be black. <laughs> yeah. I love so it. So I want them to. I'm hope. I'm hoping that the impact is that you know. I want to shine the light on people of color. Right. Now, do you feel like that gets misunderstood a lot? Because it probably can, because be historically it was not really good for black people to think highly of themselves. Right. It was yeah. not really good for you to portray black women as a mural on a wall right. or women of color. Mm -hmm. um, so historically, unfortunately, history, slavery, Jim Crow, it it did a number on people. Mm -hmm. It's 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 very true. It was a very traumatic time period. So you yeah. know, I mean, obviously this is this is a little off from what we what we had. But we'll with that, we'll oh, take, yeah, a we break. take a break. And we're back from the break, Cuzzo. Back from the break. All right, let's pick up right where we left off. But you were, you were bringing up the fact that you know, as a society, or not even as a society, but as black culture, maybe we haven't had. And I was bringing this up to you just a second ago, mm -hmm. but maybe we haven't had the proper therapy that we've needed as a, as, a, as a culture to really continue moving forward. And sometimes you gotta take a step back, you know, recognize what, what, what has happened and then mm -hmm. move forward. Absolutely, I mean, that's, that whole topic, there's so much wrapped around that. Mm -hmm. um, we still have issues with um, disparities in healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, there's not healthcare available for everyone, especially for, lower income minorities, we still have issues in our communities with access to health care. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, also, black men were supposed to be strong. They were, you know, thought to not, you know, black men aren't supposed to cry, they're not supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. So historically, that's that's been an issue, is getting, you know, black people into therapy. Yep. Getting black people into therapy has been a challenge. It's and, really and hard. <laughs> we've been carrying a load. Black people in general have been carrying a lot of weight with yep. us, and ex and the, and the the playing field has never been fair. But we're expected to still operate the same right. with traumas, with you know generational. We're not talking about. We're still trying to build generational wealth, but we got generational curses. We got generational right. traumas. Trauma. No, you're right. We got a lot of generational, but not what we really need you're right you're right so and would you say that because this is something i've found out for myself is that um i'm 32 now right and things are really just now beginning to make sense because i've had enough life experience and i made some mistakes and i've bumped my head yeah to 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 know that hey when i look mm -hmm. at my father and my yeah. grandfather these men have been through a lot you know they've been through a lot some of it they have told me some of it they haven't told mm -hmm. me um, and then just seeing the way that they were treated as I was yeah. when I was younger, you know, yeah. and now I'm, I'm understanding and I'm thinking back and reflecting like, wait a minute, that's what that really was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that wasn't, you know, my dad maybe made a light, made light of it, but that there's so much more there. Yeah. And my grandfather, same thing. Some of the experiences that he's been through, like there was so much more there, but at the time they didn't have the awareness 
no. to know that, hey, you actually need therapy. This yeah. isn't normal. You know, yeah. it's not normal to, to speak this way to your children or it's not normal to tell your son not to cry, you know, but you it's know. it's historically it's just been passed on just to almost be sort of cruel yeah. to, to each other, to our children. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the roots are just too deep. It is. It, they're just I mean, we're talking about like. You know, I'm hearing stories of when when my dad was younger, um, you know, him getting whipped with like, you know, like sticks and things like that. Yeah. Like switch switches. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and the cruelty involved in it. And it has a strong root to slavery. Oh, man. So yeah. strong. Because, too, like so the, it's, and it's more psychological than it is. And I, and I think yeah. that that's something that the, that I've learned about the black community. It wasn't the, the physical pain was bad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it was the psychological abuse. And that's that's ten times worse than the physical pain. You know, Absolutely. the pain will heal. The, the scars will, will heal. But when you do a number on someone, I mean, just for example, you know, you bring up a very good point. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was normal in Mississippi for my for my grandfather, if he got in trouble for his uh, parents to say, hey, go out to that tree. Pull a branch off of it, which is a, was a switch. Take the leaves off of it yourself, which is basically a whip. Right. And then bring it back to me, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna whoop you because of something you did. And and what he did was maybe something small, like he spoke in front of an adult when he shouldn't have. You know that kind of psychological damage. So I'm I'm making you <laughs> partake I'm gonna, in your I'm own. I'm gonna make you partake in your own your own torture mm -hmm. in a sense. And then you and you better not do it again, or you're gonna have to continue living through this vicious cycle. Yeah. You know, and so sometimes I, I think about it and, and I, you know, and it's not a knock against my dad or my grandfather or anything. It's just I understand now. I have a better understanding of what they went through, yeah. of, you know, how they were raised. So. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, it's just doing what you know. Yeah. I mean, it's not know. like they knew anything else. No. It was done know. to them. And then now they it's kind of yeah. like the, the, the big brother, what he does to the little brother. Yeah. And then the little brother does it to the next one. Yeah. No, you it's know, true. It's kind of like that. Yeah. It's true. Um, until somebody changes it then. Yeah. And then you, ha you have to learn how to forgive, right? Yeah. Forgive. I've had to learn how to, not in a bad way, but I've had to learn how to forgive my father because of what my grandfather did or what he didn't do, yeah. you know, right. or what my yeah. grandmother did or what my grandmother didn't do, right. you know? And um, I think that that's something, too, that I would like uh, younger, you know, blacks and Latinos to understand because some of the things that happen within the black community happen in the Hispanic community as well. It's, yeah. ju it's just different. It is. It's, it's a just different, different experience. You know, so yeah. rather than a, a switch, it's a chancla. There you go. So <laughs> it's a belt. It's a, or a belt. Snake you know, belt. it's it's something. Yeah. You know, you're gonna yeah. get hit with something. Something. You know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. But uh, let's keep this thing going. Yeah, now. definitely. Um, so to to kind of go back to how you say like, you know, scales are not the same. Playing field is just not the same. It just mm -hmm. is what it is. So you and I have kids. How do you position your kids to get ahead of that? So that in this game, they can compete because it's it, it's definitely different. Well, first off, um, educating your kids on the history, past. Mm -hmm. You want to educate them on the present, being knowledgeable of what how this system is set up. Yeah, them to be able to recognize what's going on because a lot of it nowadays is very subtle, mm -hmm. but it's there. It's subtle yet strong. Right. Um, you have to you just got to teach your kids to, to know it's you know, I've been reading the book uh, the 48 laws of power mm, yeah. by Robert Greene. I, I, I don't I don't I, I, I don't like it. I know. <laughs> I, don't I don't like, like it. it. But what don't you, you like have about to it? You have to educate yourself to know when you encounter that. What when don't you, you like about it? The part of I the don't book. like I don't like it feels evil to me. A lot of the the the, the thoughts, tactics, yeah. the tactics to. Mm -hmm how you need to be mm -hmm. in order to achieve this power, have people respect you. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, I get it. At some point, you don't want to tell everybody all your business. Of course, that's a weakness. People, right. And it's unfortunate that mm -hmm. you're being honest and transparent mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. your life and mm -hmm. people look we'll at you manipulate. like a wounded yeah. animal. Yeah. Um, but the importance of your kids knowing about these things so that they can understand when that's in front of them. Exactly. You have to educate yourself on a, on a lot of topics that you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. And that's important for your kids to not, you know, for them not to run away from topics or run away from scenarios or things that they might have to face one day. If 
you don't you, you won't know how to fight against something unless you're educated on it. And now how how early did you start with your oldest? Um, started very young. Started very young. Um, I've had to teach my son a lot of different things because he's he's very fair skinned. He was actually born blonde. Mm. So he kind of dealt with a lot of the light skin supremacy mm. uh, things that, that do happen with a lot of light skin folk. You know, they say if you're the closer you are to the color of the superior person, you're treated differently. And I had and I and I had to, you know, educate him on those type of scenarios too, because he's experienced racism and he's also experienced where, hey, they may have favored him over yeah. someone a little bit darker than him or something like yeah. that. So it's it's educating him on that, you know. Yeah. It's 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 deep. It's a lot of information. It's a lot of things that you have to a lot of topics you have to touch on with your children. Mm, yeah, I agree yeah. with that. And for you guys as parents, like is there ever a topic that you guys are um too afraid to talk about or no is it hey let's just put it all out there because i don't want you to ever be able to say that you didn't tell me or that you didn't make me aware of something um i don't see that there's really any topic in particular that i keep from my kids mm -hmm. um in regards to race and and you know just being able to accomplish things and, and survive and, and our current days and times and how the past is affecting the present. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't really hold anything back. I pretty much try to educate them and I definitely pass on books and things like that to to my son. I mean, I can't say if he reads them or not, yeah. but <laughs> I do try to provide the information. Yeah. So yeah. No, I love yeah. that. Yeah. No, I think and mine's, mine's 11. She's not like too young, but she hasn't had to deal with a lot of stuff that, I had to growing up. So, I mean, it, her school is primarily Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't really have to deal with a lot of that stuff right now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our like topics is, is mainly the, I can't, mm -hmm. the mindset stuff, um, doing things when you don't want to do them yeah. when you're tired, you know, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we haven't had a touch on any of that stuff yet. Mm. Yeah. I definitely think that one of the, big things that's missing for young black children, especially black males, mm -hmm. is the lack of black educators. Mm. I think that black children need to be educated by black educators. Yeah, I can see um, that, I it's, agree. It's kind of hard. Same, um, same thing with therapists as well. Absolutely. I think, I think uh, cause me personally, I'm speaking from my own experience, uh, representation, going back to representation matters. Uh, seeing someone that looks like you, they can, um, it's, it's, it is, there's a certain level of empathy there as well and grace that's given there you go. by someone that looks like you, There you go. you know, and, uh, I've had some therapists that didn't look like me <laughs> and I walked out of there like, man, I might as well just looked in my car mirror and, and I could have saved this money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a different experience. Mm -hmm. A black educator looking at, you know, a black child behaving in a certain manner can maybe see himself. Yes. And understanding yep. why he behaves that way, that yep. it's maybe cultural. Maybe yeah. it's something passed down versus, you know, a black child being educated by someone that's not that doesn't understand that doesn't yep. understand them. Yep. You, you have to really understand what people have gone through, not just a eight year old that's in, I don't know, second, third grade or whatever and misbehaving. But you don't understand maybe his grandmother was a drug addict maybe he has no father right. if you've never been in those situations you can't have empathy you can't yeah. and you can't understand and you just see them as misbehaving right and you know kids learn differently and i always think it's not saying that children can't be educated by other races but what i'm saying is i think that it would be beneficial for black children to be educated or just have more black educators in the school system and so this is interesting because you know we talk about <clears throat> history and, and I think back to Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Malcolm X during that era, right? Yeah. And there was a while, there was a period there where Malcolm X was saying, let's stop integrating everything and create our own, mm -hmm. you know? And so do you think that um, the idea that maybe, you know, there may be a separate school, right, for blacks and Latinos, that that might potentially be a good thing, not a negative thing. Like, it's not, it's not, we're not trying to associate ourselves with any and everybody else, mm -hmm. but that it might be a smarter move if we try it. Well, 
when I think about that topic, I think about HBC universities. Mm. Uh, my husband is an HBCU graduate. He went to Clark Atlanta University. Nice. So I always pick his brain about that experience because mm. I can't imagine being in a university with where everyone looks like you. Everyone looks yeah. like you. Yeah. And a lot of the educators are, are black at HBCUs. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily, I think it's actually a, a good option if it was, a, it, is an, it is an option after high school right. if you want to attend, right. um, you know, an historically black university. But um, I'm kind of torn with that one because I don't want to make it sound like I feel. No, I know. You know? And, that's, and that's, yeah, no, because that's not how, yeah. I just think the disparity, you know, disparities right. need to be addressed. Right. There's, this, there's a huge disparities. And in, in most suburban schools, children are taught by middle class Caucasian women. Yeah. That's just the truth. Right. And, the, and I want to know why is that the case or do we have, you know, black people not going to school to be educators anymore? I don't think that's true. Right. So I really, you know, would like to see the disparities in a lot of these situations change. You know, I don't know if it, if small children need to go to all black schools or anything of that nature, but we definitely need to see more black educators in the system. I love it. Now, would it be better to have... Um like, let's say we can't have that happen, right? Would it be better to have, like, somebody like Malcolm where your kid can go and get something outside of the school? Because mm. the school only teaches you so much, history, math, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think maybe, do you think, like, that part is universal and then the stuff that we need as minorities is on the outside of school? Well... I like to say capitalism has done a good job at this point to try to embrace the black movement. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you go on Target, they have black owned sections mm -hmm. everywhere. Black mm -hmm. owned this, black owned that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to capitalism, they don't have a problem with it. But I think where it may change things, mm -hmm. you know, for the future, I don't see that being addressed, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, yes, black people can now see themselves represented in. in big chain stores and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I used to see that as well. That, that is a great opportunity for that black owned business. Mm -hmm. But I do understand the root behind that. When you look at the buying power of black people, mm -hmm. we're talking about at this point, what $1.6 trillion buying power. Mm -hmm. Yet we still have disparities. We still have, ac you know, lack of access to capital, mm -hmm. lack of home ownership. We have a lot of lacks, but we spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's a huge problem, and it's keeping black people constantly divided in some degree, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. many different ways, yeah. is the issue. It's not the money, because you can say that we don't make the most money if you want to, but we spend the most. Right. We spend a lot of money. Right. And the problem is, with the black community, we still haven't, um, what is the word? We, we still don't get the assignment. Right. In every really other community, it, yeah. every other race, they practice group economics. Mm -hmm. Group economics doesn't mean you're being racist. No. If you're, um, let's say you're, I don't know, Jamaican. Yeah. You know, you're going to try to patronize all the Jamaican businesses you can find. Right. Most racists practice group economics mm -hmm. and they keep the dollar circulating within their communities, within their own races and mm -hmm. it's not being it's it, you know it's not being a racist by doing that mm -hmm. it's just to me that's what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. you're supposed to support, support your own yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and it's not saying that you don't support anyone else right but i think we have a big issue with that we spend a lot of money but not necessarily with with our own and that's something that kind of does bother me about our society is anytime we try to be pro black or pro latino the outside thinks that we're being anti something else and it's not it has nothing to do with being anti this or that it just is like no I see what you're doing and I love it I'm gonna support it you yeah. know because you look like me you know yeah and it's it's that movement I don't know sometimes I don't know if it's meant to divide or is it meant to bring together Mm -hmm. because you don't really need somebody to tell you to go support black businesses. You just do it. Right. right. You, you just know? do it. Yeah. They know you black. They, they <laughs> see you. 
Yeah, you right. know, they want you to emphasize that constantly right. as though it's a subpar business. We're not a right. subpar business. No. We're just, we're black and we own a business. It right. doesn't yeah. mean you got to make us subpar. Right. right. Yeah. And where, so where, where do you see the future of black entrepreneurship going forward with, well, with a lot of the obstacles yeah. that, I mean, because Latinos have the same thing. Absolutely. You know, yeah. where, where do you see the future going? Well, honestly, the future is all dependent on where the people want to see the future going. It's going to take a lot of people really waking up to agendas, really waking up to really understanding the power that they have with every single dollar that they have in their hand, mm -hmm. how to use that wisely to mm -hmm. further their own people. Yep. It's not saying that you can't support others. I mean, I, you know, I have... I have people in my family of all nationalities. Mm -hmm. my, you know, my brother is married to a Caucasian lady. I have blonde nep nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. it, it has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. It's just really seeing the position that black people are still in despite mm -hmm. a lot of progress. You do see um, there's a lot more black millionaires, in my opinion. I see mm -hmm. a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but what happens to these black millionaires when they make it? Right. Do they reach back and do they continue to create more millionaires right. or is it just, hey, I've made it. Look right. at me. Look at all my and, things. And, and also, too, the, the yeah. ones that the ones that have made it to millionaire status, yeah. what fields are they in? There and was it strategically designed that way? Right. There you go. Because don't get me wrong. I love rap music. Yeah, I love me too. basketball. Right. But these the ones who have this money now, they may, they maybe don't have the, the awareness the consciousness, the education to really understand that yeah. I got to reach back. I got to go back home. Yeah. You know, as tough as it may be to go back home, I have to go back home and pull people up and show them that if I did it, you can do it too, you know, and not just, okay, I move, I move to the other side of the, 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 you're in the, the hills, you're in the Calabasas. Right, now. right, right, right. <laughs> and like, no, you, none of your neighbors look like you right. and they yeah. don't want you there. No. <laughs> and you're no. paying all this money. You know, and and it, and it go, it even goes back to slavery, you know, and and once again, I said like when you brought that up, it really is deep because it goes back to the Willie Lynch letter, mm -hmm. it goes back to the house Negro versus the field Negro, yeah. right? Light skin, dark skin, all of that stuff plays into our subconscious and the way that we treat one another, you know, and you want to see those who that make it realize that hey, even though I have all this money, I'm still humble, you know, I came from where you guys came from. I don't think that I'm better. You know, and the ones that think that they're better are, are, are part of the problem to an extent. Part because of the it's problem. just dividing and conquering all over again, you know? Part of the big problem because they're not seeing how history is still playing through them. Right. They're, instead of helping their fellow brother, they see him as competition. Exactly. They yeah. see him as, I got to outshine. Yeah. I'm not going to help you. Although I have access to these resources, mm -hmm. I have access to these connections, mm -hmm. I'm not going to share them. Mm -hmm. When other people other races are freely doing this and mm -hmm. they're building together mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's the it's the bricks are there just, people just don't want to build yeah. together so and uh nick thompson on our episode brought up an african proverb that says you know if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go far go together yep. yep you know absolutely yeah now how go oh, ahead. no go ahead i was gonna say this i was gonna ask, go i was gonna <laughs> ask how valuable mentorship and support for aspiring aspiring black women entrepreneurs is like, do you have a mentor that you go to specifically? I do. I have a couple of mentors that I, you know, have the opportunity to speak to and ask questions to and things of that nature. Mentorship is huge because um, although civil rights seems like it was a long time ago, it really wasn't that long ago. So we're still coming out of an era that was number one traumatic number one we were limited um we didn't get to see a lot of black people doing things i mean if you think about it i mean there's so many inventions by black people that they didn't even get the credit for mm -hmm. i mean you had um thomas edison i think his chief draftsman was a was a black man that mm -hmm. he was he was a draftsman he was like coming up with all these models and mm -hmm. things so he was essentially the mm -hmm. the inventor but mm -hmm. blacks weren't able to get um, credit for things. Mm -hmm. So now that we have this full opportunity, I don't know if we can really blame racism anymore. Mm -hmm. It's there, but mm -hmm. you can no longer blame mm -hmm. racism for your progress. Mm -hmm. You know what it is, recognize it, 
build with your people mm-hmm. you know be conscious of how you spend your money where mm-hmm. you spend your dollar mm-hmm. don't hate on your fellow brother because they doing something mm-hmm. you know but since we have the ability to um achieve things and then also mentor other people it's important because without proper mentorship there's going to be a lot of black people that never achieve their dreams Mm -hmm. because of that Mm -hmm. and we just need more mentors that want to be willing to help Mm -hmm. their people Mm -hmm. so it's very important yeah yeah Yeah, i agree with that because with real estate you know i had to reach out it took a while but Mm -hmm. finally got to somebody who was able to kind of point me in the direction that I needed mm-hmm. to go and then mm-hmm. you know off I was you know? mm-hmm. so do you have do you have anybody that you're mentoring right now other than your children um well I try to mentor whomever I can yeah in, whoever at this point. willing we did have we had Gabriel Bradford he was an intern for us for a little while mm-hmm. um but As far as that goes, I try to mentor my nieces. Mm -hmm. I try to mentor my family. Um, If anyone seeks mentorship, I definitely am available for that. Mm -hmm. I don't deny that because, Mm -hmm. and I don't deny information. Mm -hmm. That's a big issue that I have. It's like Mm -hmm. part of this power situation is you gotta be like secret society about everything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No, you're not gonna know where I got those bags from or where I got anything from. You know, it's just, I'm a going against the grain kind of person. And that's, that's, it can be difficult for me because I do go against the grain a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and then that's where you end up being misunderstood, right? Absolutely. First impression of me, most people probably think I'm, I'm like mean or Mm -hmm. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't say much or arrogant. But you're just observing. I'm, I just, I definitely feel the room yep. first, you know, I'm yep. definitely <laughs> got to feel how the I, space. That's how I am. And it comes off, especially when I'm in a new space or depending on the space that I walk into, yeah. you know, I, but I mean, it's hard, right? Like I'm six foot tall, you know, I have my hair a certain way. So people notice, people notice me, you know, same thing yeah. with you. you. You wear your hair naturally. People are going to notice you, Yeah. you know, but then I'm usually off into the corner, just kind of like, mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And then I'll find, find how I blend in. In that space. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. It's very so important. as we get towards the end, what is kind of some of the final pieces of advice you could give to either minorities in general uh, or female aspiring uh, entrepreneurs as they're watching this? Mm, I would listening? say definitely educate yourself, seek information, understand that there's going to be obstacles. You're going to be faced with a lot of subtle things that are meant to tear you down Mm -hmm. and meant to keep you off your path. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've been through a lot of those things and I realized that they are there Mm -hmm. as subtle as they are. They will always be there. Unfortunately, Um, my advice is just to keep going, um, seek out mentors Um, Seek out information from other people that could benefit you along your journey. And the most important thing is to not give up. That's a huge one. Yep. Yep. No, I love it. Never give up. I love it. No, I love it. I love it. Well, we want to thank you, honestly, from the bottom of our hearts for taking time out of your day to come here on your day off. You know, technically you're closed today, but. (laughs) It's all good. You know. It's um, all good. you're, you're, You're a very conscious individual. You know, you're very aware. Um, you have a lot of knowledge. And, you know, your children are very fortunate to have a mother like you. Your husband Thank is very you. fortunate to have a wife like you. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I love, especially as I've gotten older, I love seeing uh, black couples, Latino couples, you know, couples that look like me. You know, I'm half black and half Mexican. My girlfriend's Mexican. Um, I, like, I love seeing us work together, you know, because it's already hard. Like everything you just brought up, it's already difficult. It is, you know. It really but is. Uh, you know, your husband obviously he's doing a great job. You know, he supports you. You know, once again, shout out to him um, yep. with Father's Day coming up. Um, but yeah, we just want to say thank you for coming on the podcast. Absolutely, we'd love to do a part two later on down the road because sure. that's something yeah. that we want to do with everybody. Is you know, kind of catch up and see where where everybody's at. Yep. But uh, is there anything else you want to say, Cuzzo, before we end it? Nope. Just hit him with that outro, Cuzzo. All right. As always, thank you guys for watching and listening to the Electives Podcast. This was another great episode in another great space. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. Peace.